too this year on the five they have on the floor and their starting five. But when everyone's game's clicking together, what do you think is your best five? You know, that's hard to say because it just depends again then as to who you're playing against. Are you playing against a team that is sized? Because when everybody's game's clicking together, it really centers around the defensive end of the floor because we're, we're getting blistered at times right now uh, with drive-bys, blow-bys, things like that on the defensive end of the floor. So I really look at who can defend and who can rebound. So we look at our team this year. When we don't rebound, we give up second shot opportunities for easy buckets. When we turn the ball over out front or wherever, we give up easy buckets. And when we take bad shots, we give up easy buckets. Mm -hmm. So really it comes around uh, def defending and rebounding the ball so you can eliminate that piece of it and make it tough for teams to score against you. And it comes around good shots, good shots on offense. Who's got that feel, who's in their groove, to understand good shot, bad shot. So really that has been kind of week to week, game to game feel for that. And we're really, what I'm really looking for, uh, I've got good players all up and down this roster, is the consistency, the game in, game out, day to day consistency of who does that the best in those areas. For a team that struggle on defense like you have, what's more important to you, attitude or technique? Energy. Playing hard is huge. Uh, technique means nothing. I've got some excellent coaches on my staff. We, we do a good job of preparing for every game, but it really comes at game time. You've got to play hard and play with energy because that makes up for a lot of technique stuff. It makes up for um, maybe you forget to rotate here or do that, but, but it's the energy of playing hard would really uh, make up uh, the biggest difference for us on the defensive end of the floor. You also said, you know, back to the whole inconsistencies, that sort of results in players getting, I guess, miscellaneous minutes. Is there ever a concern of maybe role players not knowing their role anymore when they see a drop in minutes? No, I think uh, I don't want to call anybody a, a role player, first and foremost, because uh, this team is a system where I need for everybody to be on their games. And if they are, they give you the flexibility of, of pressing, of playing at a high speed, of doing different things defensively. And I call them waves, first wave, second wave of uh, players in that. But I, I think everybody on this team, uh, if, if we were to sit them down in, in a film session with them, they'd know exactly what it is they're supposed to do and, and what their part on that is. Now it becomes the consistency of knowing it, but also mm -hmm. doing it comes into play. And then last question for me. We've talked about your point guards quite a bit. How do you measure the success for point guards on your team? Do you want to see more assists out of them? Do you put heavy weight for points? What, what is success in the point guard position for you? First and foremost, it's leadership. It has to be because a point guard is at point of attack. They have the ball, first and foremost, more than anybody on offense. And then they're out in front guarding the ball more than anybody on defense. So the spotlight is on that position that do you know how to run a team and get yours, but more importantly, run a team, know the plays, know where everybody's supposed to go, huddle the team up at a free throw line, organize your fouls out so there's always no missed blockouts, understanding what's coming next. If we're going to press, you're looking at a bench, you're controlling the game with the head coach, that's a big responsibility for point guards. And then the other side of that is you're on that island by yourself guarding that ball when it comes over half court. And in some cases, we like to put the ball, pick the ball up, put more pressure on it. But certainly be able to shut down another team's point guard because they are some really, really good guards in this conference. So a lot of it has to do with the ability to play at both ends of the floor. The leadership piece is a big piece. Of the guards on your team right now, who do you think's done the best job with that so far? I think they both at times have done a really good job. Uh, again, when you talk about the consistency of who does it the best all the time, that's what they're both for striving for. Typically, uh, at this level in the system, it takes you a year. It takes you a year to totally comprehend and understand all of those things that I just told you in terms of running a team. You've got to know offense to run a team. You've got to know it like the back of your hand. Sometimes it takes time for players to understand that. You've got to be able to understand uh, the level, the league that you're playing in, what the competition is like, the arenas, what the other teams are running, their systems and all that. You're not going to figure all that out in a matter of months. You need to go through that first to understand it. So they both have done a nice job. It's the consistency piece that I continue to look for at both ends of the floor. Who can be a lockdown defender? who can run a team at the other end of the floor as well, too, and then who can get their points as well. Thank you. You bet. All right, Theo, you got questions on the phone? Hey, Ernie, how's it going? Good. Hey, I just, just wanted to ask him, um, what did you, you guys kind of learn from, from, from the, the, those first uh, five, uh, five road back 12 games that, that you, you guys can kind of take into Tempe and Tucson this week? Uh, it's like I've said before, 
uh, understanding how important blocking out and rebounding is, particularly our guards. We've got to do a better job of that, of, of blocking out athletes. Uh, number two, because that if you don't do that, that gives up easy buckets, easy points uh, from that position and everything. Uh, number two, it's understanding we've got to take care of the basketball, particularly the environments that we're going into uh, where the energy in the buildings are good and any kind of unforced turnover or bad turnover. When I say bad turnover, one you cannot get back and play defense against. Uh, those fuel the crowd, they fuel the team's energy, and those take away points from us. And the third piece of that is, particularly again, going into these environments and what we've learned from the first, uh, all these Pac-12 games we played in, is taking good shots. Because a, a bad shot could be like a turnover. If you force up a shot at the wrong time, you force it up too quick, uh, they get the rebound, they come flying back down the floor, you do not get a chance to set your defense. That's like a turnover in the game. Those three areas are things that we can control. Taking care of the ball, blocking out, and taking good shots. Normally speaking, when we do that, we're in any ball game. Or in any game, I can sit down and break down, look at tape. We're in the game when we do those three things right. If we don't do it right, those are the things that are separating us in the games, so those three areas. Two out of the three or three out of the three. Oh, so sorry about that. Yeah. And, and then obviously Arizona is a team that lost a lot from last year. Arizona State we kind of been consistent in, in, in certain stretches. What, what, what do you kind of make of both teams? What's kind of the scout on, on both the ASU and Arizona? You know, they, they've they lost a lot. They had people sitting on the bench that were sitting out in both of those situations. The continuity of what they're doing is really good. The energy in their buildings are still there based on what they did last year. Uh, they've got great energy they both play with. They play, both play extremely hard. And first and foremost, we've got to have the mindset to play as hard as those two teams. It doesn't matter what we do on a scouting report or anything else if we don't go into those buildings and play as hard as they do because they both play hard, particularly at home. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.